Hello, Jesse McDougall here. Today in the book review, we are going to cover The 48 Laws of Power by Jeremy Green. This book, simply amazing. If you're into uh, entrepreneurship, history, martial arts, uh, anything to do with like ambition or goal oriented mindset, this book is just flooded with wisdom. Um, it's one of the best books I've read in my life is the truth. Um, the format of the book, he goes through like his 48 laws of, uh, power. He kind of makes like, uh, here, let's see one. Never outshine the master. I've kind of done that in my early twenties. You don't know what you don't know. Right. And that's fine. And that's why you're, you read to get smarter. Um, but he'll say like, you know, he'll pick a law, um, and then he'll give you kind of some thoughts, uh, just on, uh, his view about the law, but then he gives you actual uh, stories of history. And so for each law, he'll do, say, two different scenarios of actual real history from uh, the early Roman days to the 1400s to World War One and Two. So it's just uh, flooded with wisdom. That's why I like when he takes a law and... Let's see, let's see if I can find one. He takes a law and... Uh, gives you an example of say 500 BCE um, that applies to this law and then he'll give you one say in 1700 that it still applies so so yeah studying like he, uh, history and humans and where we come from and that kind of stuff I've, I found it really helps with my uh, my intelligence in the business world kind of keeps me focused uh, in terms of where I'm going with my life, where I want to be, and just trying to make the most out of the uh, the life experience that you have. So here, I'll just I highlighted so much in this book. Um, it was crazy. Let's see. Okay, law 27. Play on people's needs. Play on people's need to believe to create a cult-like following. Give your new di disciples rituals to perform. Ask them to make sacrifices on your behalf. That sounds a little out there, right? When you read that, but then he'll go into with that law. He'll give some real life history examples where it's not so kind of out there. Uh, the next page it says, having a large following opens up all sorts of possibilities for deception. Not only your followers worship you, they will defend you from your enemies and will voluntarily take on the work of enticing enticing others to join your fledging cult. Now this applies to like if you're running. Say you're a manager, a C-level person in a, in a high-level business. Uh, on that same, here, let's flip to a different one because I, I don't really like that uh, law. Uh, so here. Here's one. Okay, got a lot here. Okay, law 11. Learn to keep people dependent on you. Uh, here's one interpretation. They won the battle after battle for their employers, only to find themselves banished, imprisoned, or executed. The problem was not ingratitude; it was that they were that there were so many other conditori as able as valiant as they were. They were replaceable. Nothing was lost by killing them. Meanwhile, the old, the older among them had grown powerful themselves and wanted more and more money for their services. How much better than to do away with them and hire a young, cheaper mercenary? Uh, that happens in the career. So in your business career. So you go to school, graduate university, um, get into, say, me, for example, accounting. Um, I think I started off, I don't know, 30 bucks an hour, 25 bucks an hour or something. And they were charging me out at uh, $55. By the end of my public accounting career, I think I was paid $35 an hour. And they are charging me out at $180 an hour. That never sat well with me. Um, then in the industry, uh, another person that I know, um, he was the manager of an accounting firm and he grew and grew and grew and he was making 120,000 in salary and he's a great manager and employer and a great manager and leader and everything like that. But the owner, it was a single owner of the business, fired him even though he was great at his job. And he hired someone, and you know, this guy got, got fired. He was, you know, in his late 30s. Uh, and the owner replaced him with someone 10 years younger, just because someone younger will work harder uh, and cheaper. So that's the name of the game. That's that's the real world. So you can get pissed off at, oh, that guy's an asshole. But, yeah, really, you just learn how to deal with the world. 
And that's why 48 laws of power. If you want to achieve anything in business or um, I learned a lot interpersonally about this book. Um, here's another one. Law 30. Make your accomplishments seem effortless. Teach no one your tricks or they'll be used against you. That's a cool one. Let's see what else they got in here. Uh, okay, here I highlighted a lot here. Okay. Despise the free lunch, Law 40. What is offered for free is dangerous. It involves either a trick or a hidden obligation. True. Making a deal with the devil. Um, generosity softens people up to be deceived. By gaining a reputation for liberty, you win people's admirations while distracting them from your power plays. Either avoid them before they exploit you or play on their greed to your gain. Unless you resist them, they will infect you with the insecure feeling that you should have looked harder to find a cheaper price. Don't argue with them or try to change them. Just mentally add up the cost in time and inner peace, if not in hidden financial expense of the irrational pursuit of a bargain. Okay, so there's just lots of that stuff in here. Uh, like I said, I could probably read this book again and just still keep learning so much more. 48 Laws of Power, amazing book. Definitely one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Take care.